But you can also watch uh, CONCACAFW qualifier matches on Paramount Plus, which are already in the mix. Games are going to be going through April 6th all the way through the 12th. And I'm hyped for that as well. Six mm -hmm. groups going head to head here to sort of see which of the six teams are going to be joining the United States Women's National Team and Canada in July for the CONCACAF W championship to ultimately decide who's going to advance to the 2023 world cup in Australia and New Zealand. So keep an eye on those matches, go to Paramount yeah. plus circle some that you want to take a look at. I got a feeling that a lot of these are going to come down to that April 12th date. There's a ton of uh, groups, all of them, quite frankly, that kind of have a, a number one and a number two kind of mm -hmm. going head to head. A lot of teams who are level, those number ones and number twos on points. But goal differentials are kind of coming into play in terms of separating the two from the group winners. So a lot of these teams who are ranked number one, number two within their respective groups are going to be meeting on April 12th. So look out for uh, like Jamaica and Dominican Republic. Look out for yes. Mexico and Puerto Rico. So check those out. Uh, it's going to be going to be a riveting finish. I think CONCACAFW qualifiers people should check it out if they get the chance yeah it's really good competition and I know a lot of people say like oh, I just want to watch the US or Canada the heavy hitters but these are the good games to be watching because this is how the sport grows and oh, yeah. this is developing younger players and more experienced players across all of these different nations and the United States and Canada will be playing against these teams oh, yeah come July. So you want to know your competition. If you're cheering for the U S you want to know who they're going up against, what players are going to give the back line for the U S some trouble, anything that's going to happen. Um, these are fun games. They're really fun to watch, especially for me. I don't, I don't have a lot of care into who wins. I just am watching them for fun. And that's very enjoyable. It's Look. very enjoyable to watch a soccer game and not have to be analyzing it as much. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> when you get the opportunity to do, uh, j just view a soccer game as like a neutral, there's a certain like calmness that comes into play, a yeah. certain, a different level of enjoyment. I you just want goals. You just want chaos. You want good soccer. You want development. <laughs> and, and that's honestly what you're getting watching these CONCACAF W qualifiers. So tune in. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, if you're looking across some of the rosters across this uh, CONCACAF W qualifiers, you can take a look at certain national teams and see a ton of NWSL players yeah. represented throughout them. Uh, shout out to the reggae girls, Allison Swabi. You can see with Angel City, Maria Sanchez, Houston Dash, and uh, representing Mexico and a number of others as well from uh, Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic as well. So uh, take a look at those teams if you get a chance. We also have on Paramount Plus selective uh, UEFA women's qualifiers Fires. And uh, we're going to react a little bit to a game that took place uh, ahead of us getting together and recording this. We saw Norway versus Kosovo uh, go head to head and the return of Ada Hedgeberg to the uh, uh, Norway's national team. And uh, quite the comeback. Got herself a heady in this match against Kosovo. Definitely marking her return uh, to say the least, but a uh, five-year absence uh, mm -hmm. finally coming to an end and uh, just feels a little different, right? Kind of watching these qualifiers take place and having Hedgeberg be part of the mix once more. We actually spoke with Ada Hedgeberg about this and making her return to the Norway national team. And yep. she was, admitted she was like i've been working really hard this is something yeah. i want this is why i'm competing so well in champions league and and that's been her focus is to get back playing for club and for country after a bit of an injury she faced there but yeah three goals in this match for her norway ends up winning 5-1 but the goals from her were first second and then fourth fantastic yeah, top notch. Again, if you miss it for whatever reason, you can rewatch it on Paramount Plus or head over to the highlights at Attacking Third YouTube. Let's get into some news and notes across NWSL. Again, despite no matches happening during the international week, that doesn't mean the NWSL stops. It keeps on moving. It keeps on going. And there has been the announcement of some player additions across the league to certain teams. Let's start off with Angel City here, announcing that they have signed French international Clarisse Lebian to a two-year deal for an undisclosed amount and uh, will be taking a international spot amongst that uh, roster there. Uh, Chicago Red Stars also announcing a signing of their own. 
signing Australian forward Chelsea Darber, a two-year contract with an option for a third year. Coming out of Australia was with Adelaide United, scored 10 goals and three assists during the semifinal run there. And uh, goalkeeper, almost Schulte Angel City as well, German international, one-year contract with an option, will be joining the team a little bit later, starting after the Euros. Rebecca Holloway announced to racing Louisville out of Birmingham City, a two-year deal. And Janine Becky out of Manchester City going to Portland Thorns, a three-year deal with the Thorns. They acquired her with a trade via Racing Louisville, who had her player rights in exchange for $75,000 in allocation money and completed a transfer with Man City in exchange for additional allocation money. And finally, Valerie Gavin to North Carolina Courage, another international one-year deal with Houston. Lots of player movement happening for NWSL. I like uh, a number of these moves, quite frankly. Uh, Angel City, yeah, kind of making more of them than some some other teams. I mean, you got to wonder a little bit, Lisa. Are they taking a look at what's going on in the Challenge Cup and saying, "Hey, we got to bulk up some areas of the roster here." I mean, even before Challenge Cup started, when you looked at Angel City's roster, there's no depth. That's they don't have that. The rotations off the bench are very, very slim and so this needed to happen i think getting clarice clarice le Bahan is a forward a french international that's going to really help angel city um provide different looks in the front line adding depth to their goalkeeper position in almost schultz those are really necessary for angel city um i i imagine they're going to continue to make these kinds of movements and, and look at the roster depth and Yes, seeing how this Challenge Cup has gone, but these conversations have been in the works uh, for these trades oh, yeah. to come as now they're being announced and now it's uh, some of the players are starting to come over, but in the case of goalkeeper Schultz, not yet after the Euros. Um, yeah, I mean, these are big for them, of course. I think that the biggest trade for me is Janie Becky from Man City to Portland and using Racing Louisville as... The, the catch in between this trade because it was Man City yeah. uh, to Louisville and then Louisville to Portland. Right. But Just to catch people up for people who weren't aware during their expansion draft in 2021, uh, Racing Louisville selected Janine Becky and her player mm -hmm. rights, but unfortunately she was still uh, playing overseas and this was just something where uh, they're sitting on these player rights. So like, it looks like they opted to make a move with them instead of trying to yes. convince her to come on over stateside. And it's a three-year deal for the Thorns, so development player there for sure. So to kind of get her in, get used to formation, Coach Wilkinson, the players there, and, and the culture in Portland, and then develop this player in the NWSL. But lots of movement happening, lots oh, yeah. of new pieces across the NWSL. Uh, we'll see when we see them, when they all report, yeah. when they get on the pitch. That's that's another question. When are they yeah. coming? It just sort of feels like a lot of them, too, are you look at him and, yeah, we're we sort of singled out Angel City here for this moment. But, I mean, an argument could be made for each of these clubs in their recent signings or acquisitions in terms of looking at areas of depth, right? So even when we're looking at the Chicago Red Stars, for example, the fact that this is a forward that they're bringing into the mix and uh, to have and sort of bolster up their forward core as well, who it's, the options there have been quite slim for some time. Khalil Watt has been rehabilitating from an ACL injury. There's an unknown return date for that because, of course, they're not going to rush that back. But Rachel Hill has been dealing with a hip injury uh, since the start of the Challenge Cup, and uh, there hasn't been an update in terms of her progress either. And Mal Pugh is tearing it up, right, in Challenge Cup. She's leading the Red Stars. She's leading the Challenge Cup with four goals. And, uh, you know, that's lights-out performance, but you can't just sort of rely to heavily on that so the options were pretty slim there and it looks like they tried to go out and maybe add a little bit more depth to that forward line as well so it'll be interesting to see uh what she brings to this red star side but again another one of these signings where it's unknown where they're going to actually join up with the team things like a visa process mm -hmm. has to get cleared before uh welcoming some of these players into the league so we will be keeping an eye on them uh until Everything gets cleared. Let's maybe look at some other NWSL news that isn't 100% player related. At all. It is kind of because it's kits. And we're going to be talking about players who are going to be wearing this kits. Houston Dash announcing their alternate slash away kit, the City of Football kit. Uh, some folks, I think, were maybe kind of confused when they saw different hashtags about NWSL clubs and what they were going to be running with. And for Houston,
Houston, they're referring to the their hashtag as City of Football, and their new away kit kind of reflects that. It's homage to the city's flag. You can see a lot of cool photos here. If you're listening to this as audio, check us out on YouTube. You could see some photos of this away kit. You could see the bright blue star going across a white kit with some sort of yellow and orange uh, accents alongside the sleeves and in the collar as well. So I'm excited to see Houston take the pitch eventually in these uh, in these away kits, sort of celebrating, commemorating, and playing homage to the city and uh, yeah. 10th anniversary of the league as well. Yes, a lot of the the kits that are coming out from the clubs are paying playing homage to the 10th year of the NWSL. We saw that with OL Reign and their kits that they – pulled out. Um, and now in these Houston kits that they have, they have a little logo in the corner that says NWSL 10th year, uh, 2022. They have a lot of stars on it. I actually really like this kit. We've seen a lot of different variations of stars on on soccer jerseys, whether it's in Orlando or Houston had them before, but they're oftentimes little Chicago. They've got the red stars across their chest. Yeah. But I like these stars because they're big and they're all over. I don't know. This was fun. I wanted to talk about the kits. This was a good time. I like the they have like uh yellow trimming on their sleeves too. Yep. I like that. Oh, I'm a fan. Yeah. The stars are bright, right? In Texas. <laughs> And now everyone's going to get that stuck in their head. So hopefully you find a way to finish it and sing it. 